welcome to my channel Investing Untangled. Hope you're all doing well. So in today's video, I'll be analyzing Alibaba. Alibaba has been in news for quite a number of reasons in the last few weeks, and we'll figure out what the reasons are, we'll figure out what the risks versus rewards look like on this kind of an investment. I'll run a whole quantitative and qualitative analysis and also figure out valuations to see if this company is undervalued right now and if it is going to be a good buy or not. So let's run the whole analysis and see how that looks like. Okay, let's do a complete stock analysis of Alibaba. So I'll start with the business model where we'll study the business model, we'll understand the qualitative aspects of it, we'll understand the competitive advantage of Alibaba. Next, we'll do quantitative analysis and understand the financials. Next, we'll assess the valuation, figure out the intrinsic value of the stock. And finally, we'll assess risks versus rewards. So starting with the business model, Alibaba is an e-commerce giant which operates in the business to consumer and consumer to consumer segment and it operates in china majorly but it also has international operations so the biggest chinese platforms are taobao and tmall and its international commerce retail platforms are aliexpress and lazada so this is their core e-commerce segment next to that they're also expanding in the cloud computing sector where they're competing with giants like amazon uh, microsoft google etc and they're showing actually a lot of revenue growth in this segment also and finally they also have digital media and entertainment segment where they have platforms like yoku which is the chinese equivalent of youtube and these platforms are also growing pretty exponentially okay let's look at their revenue breakdown so 84 percent of the company's revenues come from e-commerce and rest of it is 16 percent so cloud computing accounts for 10 percent and digital media entertainment is five percent and you can see that their e-commerce segment is still growing pretty strongly so 29 percent year over year growth and cloud computing is just exponential look at that 60 percent year over year growth and talking about year over year growth here are these different segments broken down core commerce revenue was 35 percent year over year cloud computing 62 percent year over year while yuku subscription base increased by 50 percent and this is from their annual report so these results were from their quarterly report uh, the most recent quarterly report while these are from their annual report and you can see that all their businesses are showing very very strong growth Okay guys, moving forward, we'll look at GMV, which is a very important parameter used for assessing the health of e-commerce companies. And this is gross merchandise value, which simply means the total dollar amount of stuff that was sold on these companies' websites. GMV is the total value of merchandise sold over a given period of time. That time is generally one year. And GMV is used to determine the health of an e-commerce business. So the higher the GMV, the better is the health of an e-commerce business and let's look at alibaba now so alibaba has a gmv of one trillion dollars and they reached one trillion us dollars this year actually and to put this into perspective amazon ebay and walmart put together have a gmv total of 478 billion so what this means is alibaba actually sold one trillion dollars worth of goods on its platform while amazon sold 339 billion ebay sold 90 billion and Walmart sold 49 billion, and all put together, it just amounts to 478 billion. So this indicates that Alibaba is running a very healthy business that has extremely good growth going forward, and it is in a very, very good condition right now. Another important statistic that I came across in their annual report is the strong consumer stickiness. So 98% retention rate for consumers that spent over RMB 10,000. So this means consumers who used Alibaba's services, 98% of them actually retained their services and reused their services. So understanding the competitive advantage or the economic mode of this business, this is a very, very important parameter that they have a very strong retention rate. So customers are satisfied using their services and they want to use their services over and over again. This is very important. The second thing is GMV, which is indicating that they have a very major market dominance in the, in the Chinese market and in, in the Asian markets. And they, in that sense, they're even stronger than Amazon, eBay, and Walmart all put together. We also saw that they have a very strong growth going forward in different sectors of their business. So all of these show that this company has a very strong market dominance and a very strong competitive advantage. So it's not very easy to compete with this kind of a giant company. 
Okay, now we'll do the quantitative analysis of the stock. So I generally like this website called Morningstar. So if you go to morningstar.com and in the search bar, type in the ticker for Alibaba, which is B-A-B-A. -B -A. This will bring up the Alibaba stock page. And then you can go to key ratios and you say full key ratios data. And this page brings up basically all the information that you need for all the quantitative analysis that you need on this company. So the good thing with this website is that this page actually gives you data worth of 10 years or so all the way from 2011 to 2020. So you can see pretty much all the numbers have increased quite substantially. So I start with the revenues. So all these numbers are in millions and it is given in the Chinese currency, RMB. So from 6.4 billion uh, in 2011, the revenues have reached 584 billion in trailing 12 months. The next thing I look at is the net income. And you can see that net income has also grown pretty substantially. So from 1.7 billion in 2011 to 131 billion and consistent growth across all these years. So the next thing I look at is book value per share. And here you can see the company has really, really grown its book value by quite a lot. So from $8.85 per share in 2015, it stands at $48, meaning around a six fold increase in book value in the last five, six years, which is incredible. The next thing I look at is operating cash flow. So you want to invest in companies that have very, very strong cash flows and operating cash flow, you can see 2.18 billion to 203 billion and consistent increase across the years. The next thing is free cash flow and free cash flow also you can see from so from 2 billion RMB currently it stands at 157 billion, which is again an exponential growth in free cash flow. So revenues, net income, book value per share, operating cash flow and free cash flow all have grown very, very consistently across different years. So the next thing I look at is profitability. And what I look at is return on equity and return on invested capital. So I look for returns which are 15% or above, and you can see Alibaba has registered returns which are way above 15% across all these years. Again, for returns on invested capital, I look for something like 15% or above, and returns on invested capital also look very, very strong. I also look at net margins, and you can see Alibaba has very strong net margins. I'm generally interested in companies that have net margins above 12%, and Alibaba is doing great on this parameter. And finally, we'll also look at the financial health of the company. And if you click on this tab here and go down, this brings up debt to equity. If it is lower than 0.7, that's when I'm really interested in the company. This shows that the company has very low levels of debt and it is very typical of Chinese companies to have very low levels of debt, which I really like. And here you can see Alibaba has maintained a very strong uh, balance sheet in this regard. It has very low levels of debt in relation to its equity. So the debt to equity ratio is much, much lower than 0.7 across all these years. The next thing uh, I look at is current ratio. And if current ratio is 1.5 or above, that shows that the company is very healthy. Current ratio is the ratio between the current assets and current liabilities. And the higher it is, the better it is. And you can see Alibaba has consistently maintained a current ratio of about 1.5 across all these years. So this shows that the business is very, very healthy. Financially, it's very healthy. There is very low level of debt. Current liabilities are covered very well. Profitability looks great. Returns look great. Net margins look great. And all the big five numbers that we looked at, everything looks great. Basically, guys, whichever way you slice these financials, they are just amazing. So here I wanted to show you an interesting comparison between Alibaba and Amazon. I'm using this website called Macro Trends where you can compare two companies and compare them on different parameters that you can choose here. So here I'm comparing their revenues and you can see that Amazon revenues have been significantly higher than Alibaba's. So the latest revenues for Amazon were $347 billion, while for Alibaba it was $83 billion. Now we want to compare which business is more efficient, meaning out of all these sales money, which business is able to make more income out of it. And let's go to that and check net income. And here you'll see that Alibaba is actually way more efficient than Amazon. 
even though their sales are much lower than Amazon, but their income is actually much higher and it has been consistently higher. So this means Alibaba's business model is way more efficient than Amazon's. And how we assess that is by looking at profit margins. So if you go here and type in net profit margin, you will see that for Alibaba, it'll be much higher. And that's exactly what you see here, that Alibaba's profit margins are much higher than Amazon's. So what this actually means is that out of total sales of, let's say, $100, Alibaba is able to maintain $22, $22.61 as profits, while Amazon makes only $5, $4.99 as profits. Okay, now we'll start with valuation. So we'll try to assess the value of Alibaba stock and what is going to be a reasonable price that we are ready to pay for it. So before doing that, I wanted to show you where S&P 500, meaning the 500 biggest companies in America, are trading at in terms of price to earnings multiple. And it is at 37.56 right now. So PE ratio for S&P 500 is 37.56, which means that the market is currently very, very expensive. So in the history, it has been only twice more than this. So you can see it was around this time when it was in 2000 and this was followed by the dot-com bubble crash and in 2008 when the financial crash happened right before that the market was extremely expensive and after that the PE ratios went completely down and the market crashed so right now you can see in historical terms we are standing pretty high and now let's look at Alibaba. So the forward PE for Alibaba is 16.72. This is extremely low for a growth company like Alibaba. We assessed its growth potential and we saw all the segments of its business are expanding quite a lot. And for a company like this, trading at a PE multiple of 16.72 is very, very low. The next thing I looked at is the peg ratio which is also very low here you can see 0 0.76 so anything below one is very interesting and for alibaba it is 0 0.76 which is very very nice and it indicates that alibaba is undervalued currently so let's look at another resource that i've found it is called simplywallstreet.com and this website does all this analysis for you so they also do valuations for you and you can see that alibaba as per simplywallstreet.com is 22.7 percent undervalued so the analysts here are estimating the fair value or the intrinsic value of alibaba at 305 dollars and right now the company is trading at 236 dollars so which is significantly undervalued and finally i also looked at the intrinsic value of the stock using the dcf method which is a discounted cash flow model of valuation so these are the numbers that you had to input here so what is your company's free cash flow please note that all these numbers are in in the chinese currency rmb so the next thing you have to input is the growth rate so if you go back to simply wall street and if you go to future growth you will see that the analysts here estimate that the company is going to grow by 20.8 percent so if you go back to the calculator and put in 20 percent let's say and then it asks you what do you consider short term you can leave it at 10 years and then i generally do my calculations on a 10 percent discount rate and you can leave it at 10 percent and after the 10th year what percentage uh, will the company grow at so it's very hard to predict after 10 years what the future growth rate will be so you should go very conservative with it and the website recommends uh, three percent or lower so i leave it at three percent and then they ask you how many shares are outstanding and this information you can get from yahoo finance so if you go on the statistics page of alibaba and you scroll down you will get shares outstanding right here so you can input that information in here and everything is in millions so i converted this number into millions so it is 2710 and since i told you the free cash flow number was in the chinese currency rmb i converted the current stock price of alibaba which is 236 dollars i converted it into rmb and that is 1539 and then if i say calculate it gives me the intrinsic value of 3198 you can take this value convert it I, i've already done it for you so it converts to 490 us dollars so that means at a growth rate of 20%, the company intrinsic value is 
$490. And since the company has been caught in a little bit of a political drama right now, so that probably will affect its growth rate. So we will be a little bit more conservative with our calculations. So if we run it at 15% and not 20% and run the whole calculation again, and you'll see the number is 2145 now. So that is $328. So even with our conservative estimation, Alibaba is worth $328. And the stock price right now, it's trading at $236. So this suggests that Alibaba is currently at a very interesting price and it is significantly undervalued compared to its intrinsic value. Okay, finally, let's take a look at what's happening with Alibaba's stock price. So back around October 27th, it was trading around $317. And then the stock price dropped quite significantly down to 250s. So the Chinese government blocked Ant Group's IPO and Ant Group is an affiliate company of Alibaba. It's a financial technology company and Chinese government blocked the IPO of, of this company, which would have been the biggest IPO in the history of stock market. So Ant Group is a fintech company. As I told you, it's affiliated to Alibaba and Alibaba owns 33% stake in the company. The government blocked the IPO because Alibaba's founder Jack Ma was being critical of the financial regulators and the Chinese government. The government's block of the IPO crashed the Alibaba stock because the investors were worried that there is government interference in Alibaba's business, which could affect its future growth. So this was the first crash that happened. So it started recovering a bit and then it crashed again to 260s. And what happened then was this, US Congress passed the bill that could delist Chinese companies from American markets. The US has asked Chinese companies to have their financial statements audited by uh, independent American agencies to see if the Chinese companies are complying with the American accounting guidelines. Uh, and there was recent fraudulent activities uh, that was detected in Chinese companies like Luckin Coffee, which triggered this stricter action. And if a Chinese company now does not accept the auditing demands, they will be delisted. Uh, and however, the delisting will not actually happen immediately. It will take a couple of years. And uh, this move by the American government crashed most of Chinese stocks. So it was not specific to just Alibaba. And since then, the Alibaba stock was actually hovering around 260 range. And then this news came out very recently, actually just last week, where China launched an antitrust investigation into Alibaba. So the State Administration for Market Regulation, uh, which is China's top market regulator, uh, said that it would probe alleged monopolistic behavior by Alibaba. And it gave very few details, but it said that it would investigate the company's practice of requiring merchants to sign agreements uh, that would prevent them from selling products on other platforms. Uh, so if a merchant uses Alibaba, he won't be allowed to use any other platform. And that is this monopolistic policy that they are being probed for. And this impacts other e-commerce companies, of course, like JD.com or, or Pinduoduo. And this is why Alibaba has landed an investigation this time now. So in my personal opinion, in the best case scenario, Alibaba will be fined and warned against these practices. And in the worst case scenario, Alibaba will be forced to change this monopolistic behavior to foster healthy competition. And if they are forced to change uh, this policy, then this could make them lose some market share to other companies like JD.com. And this would certainly slow their growth. But since Alibaba has expanded in so many sectors, even if numbers fall marginally in their e-commerce sector, they still have the capacity to make up with their exponential growth in other segments of their business like cloud computing, digital platforms, and video streaming. So all in all, I do not see that their growth will be excessively hampered, but this could affect their numbers a bit. And these probes are actually not new. Uh, if you remember, Google actually has been hit by many of these antitrust lawsuits. So generally what happens then is that these companies are either fined or asked to comply with certain regulations and they have to change their policies somehow, but the businesses still keep growing and still keep posting great financial numbers. And this is what I feel about uh, Alibaba also. 
So this pretty much wraps up the analysis. So thinking about risk versus reward situation in this kind of an investment, I do think that there are certain risks associated with investing in Alibaba. They're undergoing an investigation and we do not know what the outcome of that will be. But I still think that the reward is going to be high on this, in my personal opinion, because the stock looks very undervalued and it will reflect the growth of the company over time. If you got value out of this analysis, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to my channel, Investing Untangled. So this this pretty much wraps up this video and I'll see you in my next video.